thought. Um, Abel, I see Abel. Abel is there as well. Amanda has come on as well there. Great stuff. So glad a few more has come on at least, then uh, there are uh, more of us that can answer some of the questions. You can just imagine if we are just four, how many questions you have to uh, each have to answer. All right, it's five minutes past, so um, I'm recording here, so um, I'm going to start the session. If I might just ask everybody, can you just maybe put on your cameras just for a second? I just would like, I know there are some people that's new now in my session and not have been be with me the first session. Maybe if you just put on your camera just for a short while, I just want to have a look at. Oh, welcome there. Great stuff. Always just good to see some face there. Right, so Vanessa, you guys, if you can just maybe for a second, just put on this there. Thank you very much, guys. All right, I see we've got about uh, seven people. Yeah, so like like the seven, eight people already online there. Hello, hello, everybody. OK, great stuff. So uh, so uh, we're going to kick off our session. If you want to, you can. Um, uh, mute your camera, you can keep it open, I don't really mind. Um, so first of all, um, just again from my side, ladies and gentlemen, um, I did send, I don't want to spend too much time on administration issues, but just to also confirm that definitely the seventh we will do the now exam for leadership. Uh, as I've mentioned, you can still just prepare those uh, guidelines already presented for those who have not completed. For those who have completed, if you were not successful, we will finalize tomorrow. But in general, most of the people that did write the exam was, were able to do it online. They they were successful in completing it and it some good marks. Uh, but we will try to, I'll just try to get the answer tomorrow so we can just finalize that. At least that people have, you know, a little bit more than another week to um, indicate if they need to prepare uh, or need to uh, prepare them for a supplementary. Uh, but uh, what I have seen from the results is that uh, for most it was, uh, it looked like a successful. Ink, so, sorry, you said, uh, so, sorry, Ink, you said they will phone us. When will they phone us to tell us where are we going to write on the 7th? All right, I uh, I have just sent an email right now there also, Marinda, but at next week, early next week, they will tell you. And as I've mentioned, remember that it will be in all the big, all the towns and all the towns and big cities and small towns. Uh, Marinda, where are you? Where are you situated? In Freyheit. Marinda, you will write in Freyheit. In Freyheit, OK. Yes. Thanks yeah. a lot. <laughs> Thanks a lot. No, no, no. Thank we, you. We, no, that's what I said in, in my correspondence. I've said that we remember we have remember we do distance education. So we have got exam centers all over the country. Um, we have um, 80 or uh, 80, um, um, 80 uh, different um, exam centers all over South Africa. So uh, so the, so it, it do take a bit of time just to prepare everything, but I also that's what I've mentioned to everybody that we will write um, in the in a town, your town, we'll write in your town or in your city. Uh, normally, like in a city for those in Pretoria, um, we will do it at our Pretoria campus. That's in Centurion in Johannesburg, is the north of Johannesburg, which is for people working obviously in the APSA on that side, the head office, very close there by. Um, um, and then the people that was very far out um, and which I, I've already have sent some correspondence and ask if they will travel a bit um, and if they're not then we'll take an alternative. For most people you will, you will not you will not drive more than 30 maybe maximum 35 kilometers to get to to the to the venue right 
And then as I've mentioned in my uh, email, ladies and gentlemen, we just want to make sure that our systems are up and running and 100% correct. So I'm busy sending information through to APSA so that they can just check their systems as we have identified uh, something that I don't think anybody really have anticipated is the fact that um, the, you know, that seems like APSA laptop block uh, any information which there's an automated access code or an automated password generated, um, which in the case of um, in Mulpark, when they write a test, then the proctor don't ask that. In our case, unfortunately, you do ask uh, as a security purpose. Um, so it seems that the moment that you were asked to, gen to, 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 to look at that access code, the system have blocked that. Now that was that was nothing we have come across in our history of using the proctoring system never before. It was also a strange thing for the proctoring company as such that 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 will be. And so we are busy communicating to APSA's head office so that they can just make sure. That's what I've indicated in my email, ladies and gentlemen. The, around the 15th of Feb, during the 15th of Feb, the middle of Feb, we will have again a test. I will do it over two days. So allow the people enough time to Let's go through and see if that happens again. We'll set it up in such a way that there will be a password so that so that if that happens again, we can still work out. And remember, the next exam is only in March. Unfortunately for us to complete the LDR, two weeks would have not been enough to sort out. This, this is a very kind of unique situation with the proctoring. Uh, like I said, we have come across um, a lot of, lot of the people that I've consulted with have indicated that's the first time they actually hear about this. And the first time they have seen this actually happening or reality. So, uh, and our IT people also say not something they would have anticipated might be a, uh, a block in the system. Uh, but again, guys, as I have indicated, I uh, do understand the frustration and I know the anxiety when one writes exams, and I do fully understand that. And that's what I've indicated that we will keep the exam guidelines the same, the questions will be very much similar. Um, so I'm not going to try to disturb and bring in new things for you. Um, and the other thing I also would like just to remind everyone is that, and I've mentioned a couple of times that I will, we, we're going to make sure that we carry everybody through, help everybody. So, and if I say that, ladies and gentlemen, even it means that for some subjects and things, I need to give three exams or four to help you to get through. We will, I will make sure that we make give everybody a fair opportunity to successfully complete. Yes, technology is a bit of a challenge um, and and as much as the IT people would say to us, no, it's working in Reliance Well, and this week I have experienced some other technology problems <laughs> and other places. Um, unfortunately, with my own bank as well, which is not APSA. Um, <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, it's, it, you know, it's, it's kind of still there. It is there and I think we do need to acknowledge that. Um, that uh, although you know it's not a kind of a perfect world, uh, but we do know that we need to move over to that world. Um, so uh, guys, that's a little bit of just the background. So I just want to maybe just give you a little bit of background there. Um, we are recording the session because I know that some people have sent me an email to say they will have load shedding, and yeah, and I think there's a lot of a lot of things happening, you know, where I'm sitting currently in Pretoria, besides load shedding for four hours, we don't have any water at the moment. Our reservoirs have run dry, run, run dry, and the pumps cannot be quick enough to refill that. So we already have been two days without water. Uh, so luckily none of you can smell me um, <laughs> at this stage. <laughs> so uh, I am looking now um, to... Uh, when we're done here, uh, go one of the gyms there in Centurion somewhere because I believe they still have water. Maybe I can just have a shower. Um, like I've got some friends in other places, so if needed, you know, I'll pack it back and we'll have to drive. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you know what? And I do acknowledge that we're sitting with so, so many challenges uh, in our country and the repo rate has gone up by another uh, 25 basis points. So for those of us, home loans and cars, again, <laughs> doesn't seem getting sized. And um, to top it up, the petrol price will go up next week, uh, for next month again. Um, you know, so, you know, one can probably sit down and cry and just give up. But I think, um, you know, that's not always the option. Sometimes in these times that that creates great people, um, there's, there's some time that create leaders. 
and also very important as as part of my introduction to the question of strategic management. So the first thing that I just want to ask, and um, anybody can respond, you can just open your mic. Um, I'm just going to ask a general question. Um, and what I would like to know, but why is it important that we look at strategic management? Why, why will it be important? What, why will a subject strategic management be of relevance uh, to us? So anybody, please, you can just open your mic there. I'm not going to pinpoint, but if I don't have any response, then I might just call out names there. So please just unmute your mic and, and, and you can respond. I just want to know why. Why why will we study strategic management? What, what will be the purpose for that? I think Hank, from a business point of view, is um, leaders need, need to know how to manage a company strategically in order to make it successful. I think um, there's many businesses started, you know, on with a good intention, but I think if there's no management, strategic management in place, I mean, um, it can lead to the business failure. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah. so what you what you are referring to is the question of creating successful organizations, yes. and it's quite important that we need to look strategically at organizations because this may actually help us to create a successful organizations or may have a result that organizations may not be successful. Yes. Right. Okay, what 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 specific what specific things in strategic management will it make it important that we need to look strategically um, at things and not just kind of like look at from a pure management perspective if I can put it in that way. Abel, if that's your input there, Vanessa. I think um, it's important to set the direction for the organization as well as mm -hmm. for, for the employees. And obviously, um, in terms of the specific goals. So if if we do not have strategic management, we will not know where we are going and mm -hmm. what the goals are. That's what mm -hmm. I think. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm. Great stuff there, Vanessa. Uh, and I think that's quite relevant is that uh, is that we we kind of need to set out particular things that we would like to achieve. Uh, and we need to be clear about what it is that we would like to achieve. Um, I think for those who have joined me on the leadership course, um, as I have mentioned to people, is that one of the most important things in terms of leadership is that you need to learn to lead yourself. Um, um, and, 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 and that means setting out specific things that you would like to achieve in life. So with a clear goal, with a clear end in mind, with a clear exit. Because often what happens is that if you do that, then you, and if you have a clear direction of where you want to go, and it's exactly the same with organizations, if we have a clear direction of where we want to go, then we, uh, we, 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 we can easily steer the ship through um, the murky waters, through turbulent times. Um, so, but if we do not have a clear idea where we would like to be in one month, two months, six months, a year, three years, 10 years, then often we might become like a ship without a rudder and the waves will start just tossing us around and we will just find ourselves all over the place and, all right, let's take that direction and let's go this direction and that seems like good and here's a little bit and, whoa, this wave is too big. We don't, don't take that one on, you know, just go try to go around it, but then eventually you find that ending up at totally different places. And so that is exactly what's happening in South Africa, why it becomes so important for organizations to start sitting down because one of the things in strategic management is the analysis of the environment in which we operate. Um, and I just by and, and and many organizations that will be successfully steered through all this turbulence and all this noise and everything happening around us will be the organizations that have a clear strategy, a clear vision, have clear goals, recognize anticipate what will be the influences of this what is happening on the organization and putting place reasonable measures 
to try to minimize the effect of that that we will have that will happen. So, ladies and gentlemen, strategic management is not a management tool or anything to try to predict things that is beyond our control or as we always say, um, an act of God um, for those of you who work in contracts. Um, that, that is not what uh, strategic management tries. So strategic management tries to anticipate that this is, this is our journey and what can go wrong on this journey? What can go, um, what can impact on us to achieve this journey? And by analyzing those aspects and have a clear idea of the possible impact as a senior management team, we can sit down and we can say, all right, how do we mitigate? How do we try to manage these things to be in a reasonable, um, uh, in a reasonable uh, uh, um, space? In terms of effect, because it will still affect us, but not to extend that it will destroy the business at all. Okay, so what's happening in South Africa? Many small businesses don't do strategic management. They, I don't think sometimes even they know and understand the word. What many small businesses do is they manage their business. They manage it from a day-to-day -day perspective. So what does management mean? Is the typical management definition that we have is they plan, they organize, they implement things and they control and things. So typically most businesses kind of like plan for day to day, maybe a week ahead, maybe two weeks ahead, depending on, you know, if they need some stock and they know, well, we're going to run out of stock, you know, like in two weeks and we need to kind of put in the order because it takes 10 days for the order to get. Um, and because many of them don't have the knowledge and don't have the experience or also maybe don't understand the concept of strategic management, they don't sit down and ask ourselves, but how will all these things that happens around us in this world that we're living in, as well as within our organization, how will they impact on the business and how will it affect the business in a negative way? So they don't think about that. And then eventually, as we then often say, they then got they then get catch with their pants down, uh, pants on the knees, and then before they actually, they either don't have the resources to overcome that particular burdens, or they don't have the skill set to do that, the knowledge to do that. And then often they find themselves, you know, running out of capital or running out of cash and have to close down. And this is what's happening. And I see that every, every, every day when I engage with smaller businesses, when I talk to guys with smaller businesses, and it's actually so sad because even though we would like to make a huge impact on them and try to get them ready and try, it's actually a little bit too late. Now, I just want to give a, a very simple example, ladies and gentlemen, is that in the complex that I live, um, uh, you know, we have um, a few people here and, and I was one of the trustees and, uh, and about two years, three years ago, yeah, about three or four years ago, uh, we have recognized and we have sit down and we have thought about, you know, where's the country going, what's going to happen? And one of the things that we have said, is that uh, we don't think the power thing, the electricity thing, the power thing is going to is going to change. It's going to get better. Now a lot of people have then said, "No, you are prophets of doom. Are you stupid? Uh, they already said on the news, uh, next six months, and it's going to be 100 percent, and we're going to have lots of power, and this is going to come on." And we have said, <laughs> "No, no, 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 no. Sorry, sorry. We have made our analysis." And we are 100% sure that this is not going to get better. This is going to get worse. All right. So what is the decision we've made? We've made a decision to install a solar on the whole external of the whole complex. Uh, there's uh, almost 100 houses in this complex. So we have installed solar, take everything on the outside totally off the grid, huge amount of money, Lots of resistance from the owners. Lots. People want to. Yeah, I one stage I thought I had to get a bodyguard to protect myself, and um, and um, and eventually um, we did get it through. It did cost quite a considerable amount of money, um, which there was money in reserves. We didn't have to ask any special levies or anything, uh, but a lot of resistance. Why would like to spend so much money? We eventually did it. And you know what, ladies and gentlemen, the most amazing story that when I drive in the evenings or I was somewhere and I come back 
and I just look around me and everything is in total, total, total darkness. My complex is standing out with all these lights on the outside and all the lights outside working and the swimming pools working and the flat lights working, the fences working, the security, the security lights are working. Everything is working perfectly. And all the critics are now silent. Nobody say a word. All right. So ladies and gentlemen, I want to use this as introduction to strategic management. And often strategic management is where people sit down and they anticipate and they kind of like um, anticipate what will happen. Um, and, 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 they, and they often base that on information that we received. They, they, it's not a question that we look at a crystal ball or we wing his knee, but they, there is quite a bit of a regional kind of judgment that you need to apply, kind of reasonable arguments that you need to apply, get some evidence, do some research, either get some qualitative, quantitative information, and uh, guys, you will hear about that word in our next model when you're going to talk about research. Getting some of this data, analyze the data, see what is happening, listening, try to build a objective picture as possible about a particular thing and then sit down and decide that what can we do to mitigate that? And that is what's so because at the end of the day, what we would like to do in a complex or in a, what I'm living in in the state is that we would like to create something which create a safe environment for everybody under any circumstances. That means that when it's daylight, when it's dark, when there's no electricity, all right. So ladies and gentlemen, are we running out of water? So we, so we actually should have anticipated it might happen. We should have done a borehole a long time ago. Uh, so we also have been caught in our pants with that one. Um, so again, you see uh, how it works. OK, so here's my next question. All right, so what I want you like you to do, um, uh, uh, what I would like you to do for me is just to use your chat box there, uh, chat box. Um, uh, Amanda, is Port Elizabeth or is London on that list? Uh, Amanda, I'll come back to that. Yes, it is on the list, definitely. <laughs> but enough thanks for the feedback, Vanessa, to set direction for organization. But thank you, Vanessa, for that one. Now, Amanda, as I've indicated, remember you are right in the town that you are, um, that you work. Uh, you are right in that town or that city, all right, um, as I've mentioned. And if it is that you need to travel maybe a little bit further, like 30 kilometers, I would have already communicated to you. I had about, we have identified about three students, yeah, three. And uh, I really did talk to them and ask, you know, you're going to travel a little bit further. Will it be OK with you just to make sure that they are happy with that? All right. So let me ask another question here um, regarding that. Um, um, do you do you believe that it is? Do you believe it's worth the time and the effort to sit down and do strat? Now you often hear your senior management what I call it, we go on a boss barat, ne? Now I know what normally goes on the corridors and says, yeah, you know, the senior management, you know, just kind of like organizing themselves a night's week away at some kind of resort and lying around the swimming pool, getting a tan. Just check when they come back, you know, drinking on a company's account and, you know, all of these kind of things going around and floating around in organizations. We're very much used to that. I all know about that. But what I would like you to ask that, um, do you think it is really useful? Do you think it's really meaningful to do strat, um, to, to go out and actually try to predict? And if you say yes, tell me why. If you say no, tell me why. If you say maybe, tell me why. OK, so I'm going to give everybody about, uh, say, five minutes, say three, five, three, four minutes. Just write for me very sweetly. Say, yes, I think it's important. Why do you think? No, uh, you know, it's a waste of money, a waste of time, you know. Uh, maybe, um, maybe there's a different way. Maybe something else we can do. I don't know. Enlighten me. Uh, you know, I'm I'm I, I'm a lifelong learner. I like to learn. So uh, let me give you a three four minutes. Jot down for me, everyone. Uh, write down for me something there in your chat box. Just quickly, and then once you've done that, I will come back and I'll have a look, and we'll read through that, and I will use that to then to continue with some of the key things that I would like to share with you today about strategic management.
So yeah, so the question is basically is, is strategic management or strategic sessions really worth the while? Is it really meaningful? And then whatever you decide, please just give a short uh, reason. It's a short motivation. This is a short reason. Oh, there is Vanessa already. Thank you very much. I'm waiting for the others to respond for us. Start typing up there, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, sorry. I will thank you very much. While we're typing up there, Amanda, can I ask you a question there quickly? Amanda, are you now are you now situated in uh, East London or in, uh, in Port Elizabeth? You can just put on your mic for me. Amanda, can you hear me? All right, come one minute, guys, please. Let us hear there. Um, Nadia, yes, thank you very much. Uh, Eugene, Gary. Are you guys there? Ivy, please. Uh, also, your response, please. Miranda. Another one minute, another one minute. That's Marinda, thank you very much. Ivy, are you there with us? Gary, are you with us? All right, ladies and gentlemen, great stuff. All right, let's see what some of the feedback. So, Vanessa said to say direction organization, I think that is something you've shared earlier with us there, Vanessa, but great stuff. It is still important. She said, yes, definitely. Ongoing planning and monitoring is important. If not, nobody will know where the organization or business unit is heading towards. Abel says, yes, to relook really into what worked in the previous and what did not work come up with new strategies going forward into achieved organization's shared goals. Amana said yes to keep track uh, of your planning. Amana said now in Alexandria, sorry, my mic is faulty. Okay, sorry, now thank you for that information. I've got it like that on the, on the form here as well. Amana, thank you for that. 
Uh, Nadia said, yes, it's important part of managing successful business to plan for any future event that might will lead to sustainability of the business. Uh, this is key for CapEx planning, new interest in the market, turnaround strategies to mitigate any risk. Also see an advantage that a business can take to remain relevant and operational. Nice answer there, nice answer. Marinda, yes, it's about planning and monitoring. So the plan must be used and they need to involve key employees. So that's a few of the responses that we have uh, received there. All right. So ladies and gentlemen, I think somebody have indicated you can see my slides, is that correct? Yes, yes, we can. Right, Grace, thank thank you. you very much. Okay, so Grace, thank you very much for this, all right? So as I have mentioned earlier, so Often we see, you know, when we start normally our first year, we, we learn things about, and I assume that some of you in your studies have learned about management in general, and we've learned that management is about planning and organizing and implementation and control and leadership. Um, and we've also have learned that, you know, they are kind of short-term plan, long-term plans and so forth. And then we've also have learned that planning goes a bit further because it also has to do with organizing people and resources has also to do with motivation and decision making and those are some of the key things that happens every day in which managers are involved with right but what we then have realized is that when an organization becomes too big um, we need advanced tools i can almost compare this to a, a doctor the, doing an open heart surgery versus removing an appendix you all will agree with me that both of these are done in a hospital, both of them by a doctor, both of them have in a theater. So, you know, the basics are the same. The, the basics is very much the same. However, you will agree with me that the doctor that do the open heart surgery is a specialist. So the person I've studied to learn a little bit further. Um, so it becomes specialized. You also will say to me, but wait, 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 we have a, a, a specialized theater probably with very advanced technology, for example. And ladies and gentlemen, this is exactly, exactly the same, right? So general management day to day and what we do in our homes is, is basically like removing an appendix, uh, which today is a very standard, very simple procedure. Go in, remove, tomorrow you go home. However, strategic management is a bit more complex and therefore also have more complex tools and complex methodologies and complex concepts. So you're going to hear probably about a number of words and terms which you uh, may have heard before, or may not, may have heard before, not sure what exactly what's the meaning. And that is important that we need to study and learn the various concepts applicable to strategic management. Because we now need to think in a more strategic way, we need to start talking in a more strategic way. And that means that we're using specific language. And I think you will agree with me in my scenario about the appendix and open heart surgery is that some basic terminologies are the same, but you probably will agree with me that in the open heart surgery, there are much more other terminologies and concepts and practices that is not happening in the uh, in the removing the appendix. And that's why the doctor have studied a bit more and longer to do that. So what we have realized to enable us to manage complex organizations that works in complex environments. We need more complex tools. We can't do an open heart surgery in the theater where they remove an appendix. It cannot be done. And this is exactly the same for us when we work in big organizations. And often people try in big organizations to apply uh, some of the basic tools they have, and they see they're not successful because they do not understand the more advanced tools available to manage the organization properly. So that's first very, very much important. All right. So the reason why sometimes we want to like do a strategy, um, and besides all the other things that I've mentioned earlier, um, it's also there to try to create for us a competitive advantage. All right. So we, we do acknowledge that we work in an environment where there is competition, um, and we know that we are uh, all fighting for a particular share within the market space. Um, and we need to be very clear in terms of why we're doing certain things. Um, uh, what is the reason why we are focusing this particular market segment? 
And that must be our strategy. The other day, um, I had a conversation with our CEO, um, and I must say, you know, one of the things that I admire about him is that he is always every year absolutely very clear about where the organization is going, what it is we're going to achieve, and how we're going to achieve that. And he do it in a very simple terms, and he normally will have about three slides to explain that, and he will be very clear, and it will be a very clear, simple message, not a complex message, because everybody in organization must understand what it is that we're trying to achieve. Because if I if I work in an organization I don't really understand, how do I really buy into? Or do I just become an employee and I just sit around and just get my paycheck and I'm happy at the end of the day just to pay my bills? No, I don't think that is good practices in terms of managing organization and managing people. So one of the things about strategy is to create a competitive advantage and to make sure that we position ourselves in a particular market so that we can be seen as creating a sustainable business. Keep in mind that strategy is not always about we want to be the best, we want to be the biggest, we want to be the rich, we want to be. No, 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 ladies and gentlemen, you have to be careful when you say that word. You need to be extremely careful when you say that word. In the moment you come up and say, we want to be the best, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, uh, your competitors is going to gun you. They're going to go for you. They're going to make sure you're not the best. So, and 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 to achieve that, in other words, to mean that you are leading the pack, is often not the most suitable strategy. It's often knows the most suitable thing to do. But to look at a, seg a segment in the market, or to look at a place where I can have a specific client, um, it's probably sometimes a much, much better business opportunity, much more better business um, a strategy to follow. Let's say Capitec Capit 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 Bank, all right, which obviously was part of the company that is our holdings company, which is PSG. Um, remember, they also belong to them. And I was quite insightful to understand the way the thinking behind Capitec Bank, when our CEO just shared with me a little bit that, about how they were thinking about the bank and how they're thinking about the strategy and how they think about everything. And that is why they have grown so immensely, so fast, because they had an extremely simple recipe. They had an extremely simple way of making banking. There were no complex things. There were no private wealth and private this and private that and gold year and platinum year and rich year and nothing like that. That's an ordinary bank that do ordinary things for ordinary people that want to do banking and they've made a big impact. They've made a big impact, ladies and gentlemen. Then you have Discovery that decided, no, 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 no. We want we want to we want to catch the people that do kind of online. We're not we're going to do online banking. And I know the other thing time bank is almost very much the same. But again, those bank have decided probably we we, we want to get the, the cream of the crop. We want to get the richest people, we want to get them to our bank, the people that can do everything online, have the skills and knowledge, experience and everything. All right. So what you need to learn about strategy is that you, when you, when you carved out your strategy, when you carve out direction, you cannot be everything to everybody. That's impossible, ladies and gentlemen. Not even our organization can be everything to everybody. We cannot give everybody what they want. So are we going to have students that will not study with us? The answer is yes. Is there always going to be students that not study with us? Yes. Is there always people that are not going to bank with APSA Bank? Yes. Okay, because APSA cannot be everything to everybody. Okay, so one of the most, 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 most important things to learn is that strategy have certain phases that you go through, but one of the things that we are learning is that you guys have already mentioned that. One of the things that we normally do is we normally formulate a vision and a mission statement. All right. Now, the interesting thing about normally when I go around and I do corporate training, and uh, let me quickly ask, what is uh, APSA Bank's vision statement, mission statement? Anybody quickly? Uh, don't Google now. Okay, just quickly unmute your mic. Tell me, what is the vision, mission statement of APSA? Silence. What do they say? Silence is golden. All right. This was a good you are too quick. You are too quick on us. <laughs> <laughs> was I too quick, Vanessa? 
Yeah. Yes, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but you know what, Vanessa, you mustn't you mustn't feel bad, okay? Uh, because you know research tells us that uh, that approximately about nine out of ten people organizations do not know what is the vision and the mission of the organization by heart. All right, they do not know. <laughs> so 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 I can so I can confirm you've successfully have passed this test. Um, so 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 this is the kind of things that often do happen, uh, ladies and gentlemen, is that organizations put down and they put its visions and missions down and the staff doesn't realize. Now, okay, that might not be so important that you immediately need to be able to um, uh, to immediately just recall what is the vision mission statement if I put you immediately on a spot or if I wake you up in the morning and tell what is your vision, you must be able to tell that me. But what more important is, is that whatever the vision and mission is the organization have set, is to make sure that the way that people behave, the way that people do things in the business, the way that employees do things, do support whatever that vision and mission statement is. Okay? So that's quite important. All right. Anybody that Google for us the vision and mission statement of APSA? Did you have time to quickly Google? Nobody. Google quickly there for us. And you've got it, then you just give us a shout, please. All right. So very important is, first of all, formulation, developing of a vision because this provides direction. I always say to people that um, that uh, there's nothing wrong if you also have a vision for your own life and you want to achieve it, um, or even a vision for your family, which, which you like to want to create. And then one of the most important things um, probably in strategic management is the question of the tool that we use, and we use it often as what we call the SWOT analysis. And I'm going to talk about that today a little bit more in detail. Um, and um, and in, in our next session, uh, we will go then further down specifically that line. OK, so typically what we have is we normally have our strategic formulation. To help us to formulate the strategy, we use a tool called a SWOT. This is our tool we use to analyze. This leads to us setting certain objectives or goals that we would like. And then we have the next stage is the strategy implementation. This is then when we actually start to, and normally what happens if one do then a, a strategy is then when we have to start maybe changing the structures of the organization, we need to start changing some things in terms of our employees. This can include ranges from things to uh, bringing in new technology, um, re redeploying of people, um, uh, um, uh, um, 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 retraining of people in organizations. Um, it might mean that we need bringing in new products, for example. Um, it might mean that we will close down some and open some. So, so uh, the strategy and the SWOT that you will do will inform what it is that you would like to do. Now, often when we have do a strategy and we and we put down objectives. It often means oh okay, all right, all right. Marina say they use SOAR. Okay, great stuff. Okay, Marina. Uh, strengths, opportunities, aspirations, results. Um I, I I must say quite I like that. And I and there's nothing wrong by making it unique. Uh, so um uh, but just keep in mind for the exam. Obviously, we'll we'll talk about strength and strength and weaknesses, and then opportunities and threats. Uh, so so two of the words you're still using. The other two have changed. So you know just when you write your exam, please just use the SWOT as it is. All right, because remember the the, the lecturer might not be familiar with your particular thing. But I don't mind that because in the end of the day, it still means the same and make it unique. And, uh, and probably what they do is still very much the same. What we'll do. Now, often what we will see is in terms of strategy is that once they have done their analysis and once they have put together some objectives, um, it is normally, it could be, it could be uh, often um, kind of radical things. Uh, and that's why it's not day-to-day -day planning. It's often radical things. It, it's radical things in the sense that um, getting rid of the product lines because they uh, they don't have, uh, they, they, they're not profitable anymore. Um, and then obviously you sit with all those people there. 
Um, what do you do with them? It might mean bringing in new products. Um, uh, it might mean closing offices, opening new ones, because in synergy, we will get that kind of information and determine that here the business is not growing, there it will grow, or we formulate a strategy to move into other places, other markets, other whatever the case may be. But normally strategy could be a little bit more traumatic in the organization. And um, ah, that's it. OK, great stuff. No, I appreciate it. Um, so normally it means a little bit more traumatic and it, it means sometimes more um, serious kind of changes that's going to happen in the organization. All right. Uh, I remember in terms of our new organization we've recreated, we had to uh, create a, a total new platform for our learner management system. That's kind of your canvas, guys, that you're working on. It's a system that's been used by the top, top universities in the world. Um, I'm talking about Harvard and um, uh, uh, and some of the top universities in America and in London, uh, they use Canvas. Uh, what you guys are seeing is only a very small piece of Canvas. And um, so what the, what the company have decided in terms of the strategy going forward is that we're going to bring in this new system. So please remember, nobody of us have really understand the systems. And that was quite a uphill battle for us to learn. And, and I know you guys probably the same because you've got new systems. You have to learn those systems, understand the systems, know how they work, specifically in the world of technology. And it did, it's not going without pain. All right. So when we normally have a strategy and different objectives, it means that a lot of things will start to change. A lot of things will start to become different in the organization. And we all hope and we have reasonable arguments that this will put the company on the next path of success. In other words, creating the competitive advantage, making sure we have a sustainable organization, long lasting organization that will be around in the next 50, 100 years. Keep in mind, guys, you working for organizations, which I work, which unfortunately govern will not bail us out if we have problems. All right. Well, must not say that 100 percent because they are the story of a bailout somewhere along the line for a bank. But I think that is not in general uh, the way that kind of things work in the in the in the private sector. So often the private sector, if you don't make it, well, you go under uh, with all the trauma that goes with that. Then last thing is strategic evaluation, and that's the reviewing then of how successful we have achieved the strategy or the objectives that we have set. So keep in mind, ladies and gentlemen, that the objectives we set in strategic and strategic planning are very much bigger kind of objectives. They are very much more large scale. They obviously have quite considerable financial impact, but they also will have quite a considerable impact on the way the organization is run, as well as on the people in the way they do their day to day work. So just keep that in mind. Think about ESCOM and the strategy of renewed energy and renewable energy and uh, wind and, and sun. Ladies and gentlemen, I can tell you, I have started the project in ESCOM about 10 years ago, and I've spent almost seven years in ESCOM, uh, a great deal of time uh, with students, um, same as your project I'm doing here. And I have the privilege to get some insights. And I can tell you, there are so many of those students that and some and and speaking in, in the group that I had, there was union members as well, and they and I've told them that this is going to happen in South Africa. This is the reality. This is what we're facing today. I've told them, and I've told them there's going to be renewable and things like that. And so obviously they were up in arms and upset about me, and they were defending and they will tell that that never will happen and this and this and this, and they will even as go as far as bringing me evidence um, from around the world. Ladies and gentlemen, from Europe and America, and I don't know, it's like how renewable energy have failed, and it is much more expensive than coal energy. And oh, goodness gracious! And ladies and gentlemen, the, the thing was is that unfortunately, that when they have brought me the research, the people I normally was able to shot holes through that research because they were never credible research. This was a wild maverick guy that was writing something on a blog, uh, posted some on Google to get everybody upset. And because of my mindset, of a scientific mindset, I could have looked for that information and I've realized that, oh my goodness, this is a lot of nonsense. There's one person sitting in a room, in a dark room somewhere, in a very dusty dark room, uh, thinking something out. And now people are convinced that this is, you know, so, and then um, for this, that 
people I've brought them their scientific reports been developed by by scientists and by uh, credible people about the the energy regulator and the energy providers in Europe and things like that. And I've provided them the clear evidence of how renewable energies and things have become cheaper than coal energy, besides all the other benefits that is there. So ladies and gentlemen, in strategic management, one thing that we have to be clear is we have to have a sound mind. We need to have objective uh, perspectives of what we are doing. This is not a guessing game. This is not sitting down and 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 trying to make up and look at a crystal ball or go and ask for bones to be thrown and 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 get readings from cards and things like that and then we base our strategy. That is not strategic management, guys. And I will talk about that in more detail when we come to our SWOT analysis. So eventually, obviously, we have then the point of looking at um, um, at uh, um, being that. A number of benefits. I think we already have mentioned many of them. I'm not going to read through them. I'll post that. You can, act, you guys can read through them. Uh, but in essence, um, one of the primary reasons is that we strategize to ensure that we create today. I like to talk about that, and you can keep this in mind, and and you'll see it in the textbooks. Today we do strategy to create sustainable organizations, uh, not successful organizations, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we, we we start talking past the concept of a successful organization because many people say a successful organization is one that makes a lot of money. So we create we're talking about sustainable organizations. That's ones that create money for a long time. It's ones that will be around in the next hundred years. So this must be the aim of people looking at strategy is to say, I want to create an organization that will be around still in the next hundred years. And ladies and gentlemen, in the next session, I'll share with you a little bit about the strategies of organizations like Walt Disney, um, General Electric, uh, Boeing. Um, I'll just share some of them just to indicate to you why some of these organizations have been highly successful organizations for 100 plus years. Uh, Apple is one of the more recent ones. They're not that old company, but they are definitely making a difference. Um, and there are particular reasons for, and I will share that information with you. So there's a number of benefits, but I think one of the most important for me is that we would like to create sustainable businesses. Now, with sustainable businesses, ladies and gentlemen, it's very important to understand the definition. It's not just to create a business that is profitable. In other words, we're making money and we make enough, but it's also a business that starts to understand the impact on the communities in which they work, start to understand the impact on the environment in which they work, and start to understand the impact on their employees. So sustainability is not just about making a lot of money and the shareholders are happy and everybody cheers and the CEO gets a huge bonus because that happens. No, the question that we ask more and more and more and more and more, and that's why part of your one of the, the, the chapters that you dealt with is about ethics. OK, is about how did you treat your employees? How did you treat them to get there? What did you do to the environment to get there? What did you do to the communities you're serving to get where you are? So people that work in the mind of strategies need to start thinking about those kind of things. It is not just about organization making profits and sales happy. Yes. I know when I talk to a lot of CEOs, that's why I'm still going to say we need to make a lot of money. But the world are putting pressure on these senior people to say, be accountable. What had happened with your employees? What had happened with the environment? What have happened with the communities in which you are doing your business? Did you make a difference there? That's sustainability. I want you guys to remember this. This is critically important for me. OK, so there is a number of uh, benefits. I'm not going to work through all of them. Yeah, uh, so the question is straightforward. Why don't we do strategic planning? All right. OK, so some of the pitfalls, unitary planning to gain control over decision resources, doing strategic planning only to satisfy uh, accreditation or regulatory requirements. <laughs> you see, same as you, same as us, we must draw up a strategic document. So let's just do it because they're going to ask us, you know, we just need to have a document. 
the highest team moving from mission development to study formulation, failing to communicate the, employee to, the plan to employees. They don't understand what it's all about. Top managers not actively supporting the strategic planning process. We see that often. Um, failing to use uh, plans and standards for measuring performance. Often what happens in strategic planning is the way we measure that and to see if it's like is we don't have a proper thing in place to measure the actual performance and to see if we are doing that. And ladies and gentlemen, obviously those from my first session will know that measuring organization performance is my area of speciality. And that's also what I'm busy in doing in terms of my PhD currently. And the question is, is that how do we measure if institutions of higher learning are successful organizations, sustainable organizations? Um, that's what I'm working on. I'm creating a model for them in which they can measure them. And I already have got some very interesting information and very interesting things. All right, so we're coming to engross and current problems and um, and then, uh, you know, uh, uh, not enough flexibility or creativity often. And then often the whole question, um, the, whole, the whole question of um, the resistance to, um, and because normally when uh, strategic planning was happening, then strongly that will relate to some change that must happen. So remember the things I said earlier. And then obviously there a lot of people fail in the ability to formulate change plans that is properly communicated, properly drafted, where people buy into those plans for the change. And then often we get the resistance in the change and we might then get a collapse in actually in the progress to do that. All right, so that's some of the things that we're looking at. Shona, you ask me so so that why is ESG is topical for most of the companies? So that is why ESG. All right. If you talk about ESG, just give me an indication of what is ESG there. Shana? If you can maybe just unmute, just tell me ESG quickly. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, environmental, social and governance. Oh, OK, all right. OK, great stuff. All right, thank you very much. Yes, uh, there are so many um, abbreviations these days that um, environmental, social, Nadia, thank you, and governance. Absolutely, absolutely. And remember, there is there is not just governments, but there are various organizations that is putting more pressure on to organizations to establish that you you cannot just create an organization to make profit to keep shareholders happy and the meanwhile but if you look back an organization you look behind you, you it looks like a wall uh, you have unhappy communities you have abused your employees you have abused the environment you've taken out now I'm talking referring to companies like oil companies like uh, um, uh, power generating companies or energy companies, those that use the, so they need to come up with responsible practices. They need to do that because that becomes quite critical. Um, thing is the whole question of environmental, social governance, and to ensure that we build sustainable organizations, but that looks at the broader concept uh, of what we are doing. All right, so let me just pause here for a moment and let me just ask the, any questions, anything that you would like to know, anything that you want to have clarity on. Have a shout, just unmute your mic or just uh, write your question down there. All right, great stuff. So do you think in kind of developing and formulating a strategy is quite a, cha a challenging job? I don't know about challenging, but I'd say interesting. Okay. Because, <laughs> yeah, it forces, it forces the company to look at things that they wouldn't want to also focus on at times. Um, and you mentioned something very important earlier, hence the topic around ESG to say hmm. um, you've made profits. How did you get there? Um, what have you done for your communities and also your employees? Um, are they treated well? My question then is, what if you've done, you haven't done well for, for, for you know, your community and your employees, but you've made good profits? Um, what then? 
Well, Kalola, what will what will what will happen in uh, you know over over and obviously over a period of time. It's not like immediately, and it's not like it's not like they've broken any kind of laws. Um, but I think that if we're looking at where the world is currently and what is becoming important for people, and remember the fact that we all getting more educated, or we are you know we are. We, we, I mean, we have so much information to our avail, um, push of a button, you know, it's not like, you know, 50 or 20 or 30 years ago where people could have hide things and could have got away with those kind of things. Um, so my take on this is, and there are already some research on this, and there's also some clinication that many of these organizations then over a period of time, they start to fail to be successful. So it eventually it, it, it starts to um impact uh, on their bottom lines it start to impact on their profitabilities it start to impact on what the shareholders like or don't like and eventually they or it start that broader communities start standing up and say enough is enough um and we expose start exposing them uh, think about that one particular lady uh, and i um oh, sorry i will apology but i'll, I'll post the on online okay the, the video uh, the, the class there was a lady that the for the shell, I think a shell, uh, I haven't followed in detail, but they wanted to start with the fracking um, and do the offshore um, testing and things. And uh, and and she was like a lowly soul and, and she took them to court and she won the court case. She prevented shell from starting the first and that wasn't already before uh, before uh, COVID. Um, she has prevented them. She has stopped them through a court case. She was a lonely lady doing this. So that is for me, that was for me a quite good example of be careful of the power of the community. Think about our gang trees, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> those nasty things here in Gauteng, for those who stay in Gauteng, nee, that we have, but do we pay, do we don't pay? Do we take a chance? Nee. And again, we see the will of the communities have forced the government's hand to say, We'll have to restart rethinking what we're doing here. So I think we see more and more this kind of things where communities and civil organizations and those are holding people in power responsible for these kind of things. And they, they need to start to answer. They need to start to then think carefully what they are busy doing. So, so as we as listeners, as an employees, as we are starting standing up for what is right, we will see gradually that organizations will realize we need to change the way that we do our business and to recognize that sustainability could be uh, definitely in the question of um, uh, creating, uh, looking after our communities, looking after our uh, um, uh, employees, looking after the environment. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, we know what's happening in the environment. Unfortunately, it, and everybody's saying it's the exploitation of the capitalists that have been caused. Like we're sitting with the earth getting warmer and warmer because it's posting, and because we because we didn't know that initially, and obviously they were driving that full aid. And now suddenly people are starting, and we see that every time. If you just open the news, you just listen, you hear everywhere people are starting to say, "Enough is enough. We 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 need to have more responsibility. You guys need to." And I can see in organizations, ladies and gentlemen, even in organizations like ours, where there are clear directions from our senior people, from our board, to make sure that what we are doing, we're doing things in a sustainable way, protecting our students, uh, protecting our uh, um, uh, communities, protecting our employees. Now, I'm not saying they do 100% correct. They can still do a lot, but they obviously are limited by the resources as well. But Organizations must start showing that in their strategies that this is the direction they would like to take in. OK, but then one can start to start as employees. One can start to buy in. One can start to trust. And yeah, I want to read to you. And this is the only thing I want to do for today is the, the question of ethics. So if you start really looking after it, we can start to trust you. All right. Do I trust some political party today? No, I don't. Because their behavior is absolutely something I cannot trust. There are so much evidence. I mean, it's, yeah, and I don't want to talk politics, but I'm just using that as an as an example. Do I really trust my bank? 
can I trust, you know, study you? Will they look after me? Will they care for me as a student? Will they help me? Now, ladies and gentlemen, one thing I can tell you, um, and I've told it to my groups when I did for the other students that was there with, is that the one thing that I've always do in my groups, that you are my most important clients. You are my most important people. And, and I said to them that even if I need to kick your ass, but I'll get you through this program. And I said it again, even if I have to kick your ass, I'll get you through this program. That doesn't mean that during our journey that things will go 100% correct. But my aim, my goal, in terms of looking from a, from a, from a strategy point of view for this, what I'm doing with your guys, is to, to see that you are successful in what you're doing here. I have no reason as to not ensure that you successfully complete this program. I will not benefit anything. Okay. And therefore, my actions and everything, and I can tell you that there are managers that hate me for that. Because sometimes, you know, asking a little bit more. But at the end of the day, I say that your guys enrolled, you have made a commitment. You, that's part of your journey. I can negatively or positively influence this journey. All right. Now, this is sometimes not an easy journey, guys, because obviously you need to do a lot of work in this journey. You need to put in a lot of effort, a lot of energy in. But my role is to ensure that I make that journey as easy as possible. Okay. But obviously, I'm not going to make it that easy by giving you an exam paper and those kind of things because that's unethical. It's against the rules, it's against the laws, it's against everything. All right. You still need to do that kind of thing. But for me, it's about you achieving. All right. And that's why I've already sent you that email, ladies and gentlemen, to explain to you that once you are successfully with this module, with this, with this advanced diploma, you can continue with your honors degree. And I want you to just throw it out so that you know that yes, but maybe some of you may have that uh, vision or maybe that aspiration. Some of you don't. That's also fine. I don't, I don't, that, that's I'd say if you want to go another direction, maybe it's your journey, it's not mine, but at least that's my role. Okay. And I will do everything in my power to do that. Okay. Because at the end of the day, this whole program is not about Hank and what he achieved. It's about what your guys achieve. And I want to say in the end of the day, when I write my final report, I want to say, Every student have enrolled, have passed, and they've passed well. Then I can go to bed and I can put my head on my cushion and say, that was a job well done. Because I know that each one of you, at the end of the day, is going to make a difference wherever you are and what you are doing. Hence, either in your communities and your families and whatever. Okay. So it's not just about getting a qualification. That's an important part because you want to have that little paper. You want to go to the graduation and I will be at graduation. I can promise you that unless something serious happen, like I'm ill or something like that, but I will be at graduation. I'm always for my groups there and I want to see you guys passing the stage. I will also, when you do that, I will normally do the handshaking or I do the sashing. That's where I put the, where I put that, uh, uh, the, the, the band over your head. Um, I normally do that when um, for my groups. Um, because it is for me absolutely to to demonstrate that you can do it, all right? And I always say to people, guys, you must remember, you're not the first one going through this program there. Eh? There are many before you, and they've been successful. So there's no reason why you cannot be successful. So always keep that in mind, okay? So what I'm sharing with you guys is also part of looking at the human element in this process, all right? So although we have a very technology thing, you know, it's online test, online this, online that, and very in little interaction with you guys, me talking a lot. I still would like to see the human element and I don't forget about that. Okay, so um, on the commitments and obligations, I've made an obligation that I want you guys to pass. Now, there might be the one or two that will fall out, but if they fall out, it will not be because that it is um, something that we have done or something like that. There, there might be a legitimate reason. You know, it could be like ill health or something like that. And I don't hope something like that happened. I'm not saying the case. Not risk misrepresenting something or misleading people about things. I'm quite an open and straightforward guy. Uh, be a responsible community citizen. Uh, utilize accounting practices. Eliminate question, uh, questionable activities. Uh, they, they even, guys, and sometimes you'll see even in your exams and all those, I am I'm, I'm very much strict on 
allow, uh, making sure that whatever you do exams is credible because I don't want to come and ladies and you must understand this. I don't want to come uh, in a year's time and somebody come to you and say, Nadia, where did you complete it was? Oh, study. You. Oh, study. You. Oh, you know that guys, <laughs> you know, they give people exam papers. They, they, they give you the answers. <laughs> that piece of paper is worth nothing. <laughs> <laughs> it's like yeah, yeah, you can ah uh, yeah you, you can go and buy your next fish and chips with that piece of paper, man. I cannot allow something that had happened because I know Nadia. I don't want to go and 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 I said I've achieved this qualification as institution. They say, yeah, no, well that reputation, that reputation, that institution is questionable. Yeah, we know all about them. You know, they they sell papers underneath the table. Eventually, these things will come out, ladies and gentlemen. And sometimes I'm pretty strict when it comes to these kind of things. And sometimes you might not like me being strict, but I, I want to make sure that whatever you've done, that people say, wow, that's a that's a good institution, a particular institution. You know, this qualification, it means something. OK, and that's what we're working on, because one of the things we are striving to in, in study is we would like to see our students to be uh, the first choice when it comes to employment. Now, it's going to be still a wrong road ahead for us to do that, OK? Because often you see today if people studied at like maybe at WITS, for example, or they study at Stellenbosch Engineering, I can tell you in the workplace, uh, when they look engineers, they say, uh, please, can we have first the students that have studied at Stellenbosch? Can they please be first on the list, the five? And then you can put all the rest of the universities. They could be six, seven, eight, nine, ten, whatever. And that university there, and I'm not going to name, I'm not going to call any names, uh, please put them totally last. Don't please send them letters and tell they're not successful. Ladies and gentlemen, that is how it works in practice. That's how it works in life. So sometimes where you come from the university is also playing an important role in terms of credibility. And for us, sorry, that becomes quite uh, an important. And, and, and then the last follow the motto to do unto others as what as you would have uh, have them to do unto you. And for us, we're not going to do things that is that we will not do. OK, so whatever I give you, whatever I share with you, whatever I present to you, is things that I will do as well. And it is the things that I will engage. I'm not I'm not I'm not here to make life difficult for anybody, uh, but I'm there to maintain a standard. And I think that's quite important. And we need to meet the standard. I think that is quite important. Um, and, and and we know exactly what is a standard. And and, and you know, and, and we talk about our groups and things like that, and we already have indicated from the lecturers last time, a Chris to and myself, and say is that, wow, we have some extremely dedicated um, uh, students in APSA. Uh, we are actually proud of them. Uh, this is the conversation that happens, okay, guys? And um, and and we believe we 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 gonna we're gonna see some excellent results, okay? And and that becomes important for me now. The reason why I'm sharing all of this with you guys, because this is all part of the strategy of study. So I as an employee need to speak the strategy. I need to talk the strategy in the role that I play. In where I'm involved. I need to sleep that I need to share that because at the end of the day, it's not just having. A. Uh, it's not just having a, a job and for me, it's not just having a job. And that's why I say to many of you, like even the evenings, I mean, if you need to be contact me or something and then you guys will see I respond sometimes even in the evening um, that I that I that I do that uh, for you. All right, so there's methods for achieving, obviously, uh, a more ethical culture. I'm not going to work for them. You guys can read through them. And then I just would like to stand still for us in our last few minutes that we've got on the question of the importance of a mission. Um, and then in the next session, we will talk about the question of formulating strategies. And I would like to go into detail regarding using SWOT analysis, how to use the tools, what do we do there, how do we do things, how do we eventually get to a point where we have a clear a strategy and a clear indication uh, of um, um, what it is we would like to like to achieve. All right. Uh, da, 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 da. I actually just want to. Oh, OK, I've got that one. Sorry for that. I actually want to make this a, a little bit bigger. Mm -hmm. 
All right. Oh, I had it function now while translate. Or is it? Uh, no, I don't want. No, 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 no. I don't want that. Oh God, I had that function now a while back. But in any case, let's see. So why it's important that we create vision and mission? So a vision statement is what do we want to become? All right. Okay. So the vision sometimes is the. It's a very short statement. It tells us what we want to become. Uh, I want to be the best 100 meter athlete. Uh, talking about maybe uh, Michael uh, Jordan, eh? Uh, that might have been his vision statement. The mission statement is what is our business about? Explain the reason for why we are our being, same reason for, why, for, for our existence. Why does the business exist? So a mission statement can be a little bit longer, but the vision statement is always very, very, very short. Okay. So you may sit down and say, I would like to create a vision statement for my family. And I said, um, for example, I would like to say, um, my vision for my family is to optimize all opportunities that the world will present to us. That's the family's vision statement. Okay. So it means then that we're going to use opportunities and we're going to go for them and and we're going to excel in them and we're going to become great in what we are doing and, and and so on and then obviously the mission is how do we do that how do we how how do we get there you know how do we enable us to do that all right so to enable us to do is we have to obviously go and look what opportunities is do we have resources do we have and sometimes we not have all the resources like any other organization they don't have unlimited resources so that's quite important okay but then if we're looking at why important because this provide direction for the future at least give an indication of what it is the organization want to achieve in the future, right? And I can tell you right now, Decima, because of the study of vision and mission, one of the things that our we are working extremely hard is that we would like to become the first private um, institution of higher learning, because remember, we are a private institution, although we meet all the regulatory requirements of any other academic institution, same as Millpark, but study wants to become the first private university in South Africa. And I can tell you we are strongly on the way. There's a few things more that we need to do. They are going to, the, the legislation will be changed that will allow um, private educations in South Africa uh, to call themselves a university. Now, listen, when private universities in the world is not, a, it's not a strange familiar. In if you go to the East, um, Singapore, if you go to the Emirates, those places, they 80% of them are private universities. They are privately owned. If you go to America, um, technical colleges are state subsidized universities. In the UK, they are privately, all right. They get their funding from sponsors, from student tuition. Uh, they are not regulated by government in the same way as they're in South Africa, all right. And therefore also, you'll see that in, um, in some of these top universities around the world, Harvard, um, um, they, 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 they are very little political influence in what they do, and they purely focus on academia and creating. And if you look like uh, MIT, for example, which is a more research orientated, I had the privilege to be engaged with the Swedish uh, people at the moment, although although state government do pay some money, but they are very much independent. Uh, they decide what I want to do and how I want to do so they promote um, um, they might prosperity, advancement, development. So that is that is part of what we need to do. And unfortunately, that is not always the case in South Africa, uh, because very much, um, and and uh, that that lesson man is even before apartheid. So so please, I don't even blame apartheid for that. It was even before. Oh, I'm not blamed. I'm, I'm not blaming today politicians or anything. Before apartheid was exactly the same. Uh, great influence on what you taught, uh, what people must hear from you the agenda and those kind of things versus totally have the freedom to develop and to grow and that we see over the world that's the case so hopefully we can achieve that the foundation for priority strategies so in other words once we know what we would like to do we can actually determine what it is we need to do what we want to do now we know how to do that employees understand organization the purpose and you can also also say to yourself if you know an extend organization the vision is it the organization i want to associate myself with can i work for that 
Now, I know South Africa is not that easy to say that because for us, it's more about getting a job. Né? Um, even though we might not associate all, all, all value uh, or in, 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 entrench ourselves with in the vision statement, so we're just happy getting a paycheck at the end of the month. But if we can work to a situation where, <clears throat> where, where, where uh, employees can actually believe in what the organization want to achieve and how it wants to achieve, then that's great. Okay. <clears throat> and ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> um, just like this morning, I was, I was, uh, while well, I had a full day of things, more administrative things, but I was phoned this morning at eight o'clock and I was asked to quickly drive through to Rustenburg because there was a group of students there that wants to do, I didn't have all the information. They decided first they want maybe to do a static Mancoso, they want to study at Regenesis, but then they also decide maybe study and we decided we're driving through immediately. And um, at the end of the day, when we were done um, today, um, besides the fact that I have convinced them to enroll all the students with Stadio, besides the fact we, get, we have offered them a better opportunity and a better price as well, uh, we also, uh, I also have, in, I, I've also achieved to enroll the, the CFO. Uh, she wants to do an MBA, she didn't have an honours degree, but then I have convinced her she must do an honours degree rather and uh, do rather than a um, master's degree as an MBA. And, and she was 100% and she enrolled for a master's degree today. And the reason why I'm doing that, because I believe in what study is doing. I believe in you as a student. I believe in what we are doing. And that's what kind of employees. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it might sound that I'm every day believing. Sometimes I don't. And then I have some serious conversations with some senior staff members. Uh, obviously, I have the opportunity to talk to our CEO as well. And then I'll share to him. I said, hey, you are, you are making me disbelieving in this organization. And that happens as well. Provide the base of allocation of resources. The ones we know what we do is we know how to allocate resources. But more important, and ladies and gentlemen, this is exactly ESCOM. They should have decided like 20 years ago, this is what we're going to. They already should have retrained their staff in renewable energy, retrained their staff in solar power, the engineers, the technical people, all those kind of people. They already should have done that. Have they done it? Nothing, ladies and gentlemen. Okay? Nothing. So that's the reality we are facing, right? And if you just want to know, we just have load shedding, but I can still continue here. And divergence views can be received and resolved. So there's always a focus point on what it is that we would like to build. And then also it provides then for stakeholders. Uh, and this could be investors. Uh, it could be um, other organizations, um, NGOs. They also could then more believe in what your organization want to do, what they want to achieve, what they want to accomplish in life, and they can actually be a voice for your organization. And I think that becomes quite, 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 quite very much important. And then at the end of the day, if you have a clear vision and mission, your staff understand it, they know how then to talk to their customers. All right. And that impacts in service delivery at the end of the day, providing that excellent service that you would like to provide. And that eventually probably becomes then boiled down to the most important thing, because at the end of the day, it's our customers that's paying our salaries at the end of the day. Uh, I'm not saying the customer is always right, guys. That 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 slogan doesn't try that it doesn't work with me, all right. The customer is not always right. Okay. But there are ways and how you can deal with the customer that have unrealistic expectations uh, that that is totally unrealistic of what I want to do and, and to indicate to them that you know what. Maybe what we provide is not what you're really looking for. Um, there are maybe other places where what you're looking for can be best suit. All right. How often do we get customers? You know, we sell it. We, we know that we're selling like um, a, a good, 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 good um, a, a vehicle. You know, we're selling a Jetta, you know, or a, or a good Volkswagen, you know. Uh, but oh boy, they want the Rolls Royce, né? but they're not willing to pay for the Rolls Royce. Né? So that customers cannot be right. OK, uh, we, we cannot do that. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's a few things I want to share with you. Um, can I ask this last, last, last thing? I mean, you can you can you can open your mic and ask any questions, but I just would like you to just one line quickly for me, just in your chat box, write for me quickly something that you've learned today. Just make it one sentence very quickly. So please uh, start writing down there and we will have a look at that. And then is there anybody would like to ask any question for me? Please, guys, you can just unmute your mic and just um, just ask a question. 
So while we're writing there, just write one sentence quickly. What have you learned? And for the and anybody that want to talk to me, you're more than welcome, guys. Uh, just unmute and just talk to me. I'm listening. Let me give you one minute for that. That's our last exercise. And that's this in terms of the exams, ladies and gentlemen, coming up for those students going to write early, early next week. You will be informed about your venue and the place. But as I've mentioned, remember, it will be very close to where you are actually working. So you don't have to. Don't don't stress about that. You're not you're not you, you don't have to go and pack an overnight back. All right, let's down quickly right down there. The pain of strategic management, the importance of planning. Thank you, Dave. Thank you very much. Let's get some other some other responses there. Three stages, uh, strategic management. Nice, Marilla, yes. Three important stages. All right. Um, they love to ask that in exams and love to ask you the assignments about the three stages. Uh, oh yes, perceptions. Yes, very much. Yeah, yeah. If you have uh, uh, if you have a clear idea of what you want to achieve in life, then you can be. You can always then clear communicate to people what it is you want to do, and that that minimises the perceptions about what and how and so forth. Oh, let's get Vanessa. Actually, everything so far is very important, but business ethics always uh, very interesting. Vanessa, yeah, yeah, we can talk long, 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 long times about business ethics, eh? No idea. Strategy is not about being the best. Uh, you. Can it be everything to everybody? Great stuff. Thank you, Nadia. Yeah. yeah, I always say if you want to be a leader and you want to be everything for everybody or you want to keep everybody happy, I suggest you rather go and sell ice cream. Uh, don't become don't become a manager, all right? <laughs> Unfortunately not. Don't become a lecturer. Uh, there will be some students that will not be happy about me, but, you know, uh, Sometimes you cannot you cannot keep everybody happy. It's very difficult. All right, let's see if there's one or two more responses. I assume there's no questions, guys, that you want to ask. And but as I've indicated, please feel free every time. You can send me, drop me an email. You can drop me a WhatsApp as well. If you're unsure about anything, please just clarify with me first. If there's any uncertainty before you start. Uh, with creating a perception or a story, uh, please clarify with me first, and um, and then uh, we know what the actual answer is on that. Hank, just to clarify, in terms yes. of the dates, um, publishing yes. studio, are there those the final dates? Am I correct in terms of um, the way forward on the course? Um, yeah, our, exam no, so our, our assignment date, as well as sorry, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. OK, so I'm sort of confirm the dates and Stadio in terms of this course. Um, yes. Is, is it definitely um, as per the schedule on Stadio? There'll be no changes in terms of assignment and upcoming test yeah. on the module. So, so so that what you see on Canvas, that yeah. is that is the final, final, final dates. Okay. Uh, and that dates will not change unless okay. something extremely out of our control happen. All right. OK, noted. Thanks. Thanks, Hank. All right. And then, Nadia, while you are sharing that, I did send an email quickly. Keep in mind, because you are also a resident student, there are some automated things that sometimes generate, like, for example, the exam the exam roster for the normal students, all right? But keep in mind, you don't. You, your time frame is not that of the all the other students. Just keep that in mind. This is what I've, I've just um, let everybody know. Just focus for me on the dates as we provide. But if you're unsure, you can always just ask me. But that I, I normally make 100% sure that the dates that is published on the canvas is the right dates because like I said from the beginning, I said that is the only platform which I use. So please, if somebody else sent other documents and other scripts, please just ignore it or please just clarify that right, even from APSA side as well, okay? Because once I publish that dates on canvas, that is the dates that everybody have agreed to. All right, and then I will, as we go along soon, I will, the only other date that I need to provide, but you know what? I have some great confidence at this moment that everybody is going to pass this exam. I don't know why. I've got a feeling. I've just got a feeling myself. Everybody's going to pass this exam. So I don't have to set another supplementary date for any student. All right. <laughs> so don't disappoint me, please. <laughs> you make a lot of work for me. <laughs> all right. So let us pull through this. Pull
go through this exam and get it done, dusted with, all right. So I don't have to set another dates there and things like that. So the so remember leadership is there, and then as we proceed halfway, approximately through through management, I will start then to open up management, uh, research, and to give you the dates. And keep in mind for the research module, you have no exam as well. Please just keep that in mind. There's no and exam. Sorry, yet. are you going to send share the slides with us also? Say again. The slides that you got on the. Ah, yes, 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 yes. Yeah. As with leadership, I will upload uh, all the, I'm going to like all the presentations from uh, Dr. Susan, Dr. Loffy, mine, and then also the presentation that's been done. I'm going to upload everything that I will do tomorrow morning. And then one more question. Sorry, I know I jumped from the other one to no, this one. No, no problem. Um, so for the, um, the, the, the one that we're doing at the, many, the MAN, um, yes. Is it going to be also a venue that we're going to sit and write the exams second round, or are we going to do it online like we tried no, with I, the LD? No, no. And remember, I've sent out that I've sent out an email which I've explained uh, that I want the man to be online exams because that is the requirement from APSA. Um, so um, in that email, I've explained that I am busy now communicating to uh, APSA's uh, uh, IT and senior management as to what we have picked up as the reasons and so forth, what have happened. Um, and I have already received an email back from them that they are fully committed to um, to clear or to work through whatever they need on their side to make sure that everybody will have access and accessible and there's no kind of like hiccups in the process. So so from now until the until the 15th, 16th of Feb, of Feb we are going to uh, just make sure that whatever laptops, whatever changes need to be made is done. All right. And I'm giving this enough time because I do not want to have a repeat of the previous exams. That was for me. I didn't sleep that night because those are kind of things that's, not, that's a big no no for me. So now I'm going to make 100% sure um, so I am, we are then on the, on the 15th and 16th, so I'm going to then give a mock exam, um, which will be then like a full exam. Um, I will even ask one question and you can just answer anything there that you like. Um, but it will be, it will be uh, password protected in the sense that it, like, like, like the exactly normal one. So on the 15th and 16th, we're going to test. And if there are still some hiccups, I will then still communicate, I talk until then. And if needed, and if everybody goes through and everything is fine and it looks like, OK, no, we don't have any hiccups everywhere, anywhere in the system for that, then I'm going to be happy and say, OK, good. If there's still any hiccups, we will fix that. And we even do another mock that we'll do by the end of February because our next exam is only in March. So we have enough time and I want to make sure 100 percent that there is no hiccups. I want you to sign in and must be seamlessly signed in, complete your exam, get it over and done with, and allow us to mark it and get it over this And But for that, I need a bit of time, and that's why I've decided to go the route for the SUP, because I don't want to extend that indefinite as well, to go through the venue base, so that we can just get that over and done with, and, and get it ready then for the man. So that man means then the main exam, as well as the SUP will then be an online exam. And then keep in mind then for MET, it is a research proposal that you are doing. So it basically works in that way. You get uh, you can you can do your, you're going to get classes. You do your first proposal. We assess your first proposal. You hand it in on Canvas. We assess your first proposal. Give you feedback. You work on a second proposal. You hand it in. We assess your ex a second proposal as if it's an exam. If you pass, it's done. Dust it. Finish and clap. Okay. If you if you don't pass. We then give you gain feedback on the proposal and you then have another opportunity as of the sub to resubmit and again through Canvas. So there is no online exams for the last module, the research methodology module. Um, Hing, just one last question for myself because um, I was able to write the exam. OK. Um, so will our results be shared um, first or will we be shared uh, together with the other with the other colleagues that need to still write? All right. So Nadia, so what I'm just busy at the moment is I'm just we are just verifying all the results. Okay. As okay. I've mentioned, I know what's the results now, and I said I know they've been because we just an exam part and just verifying. And I hope they've indicated by tomorrow. So what I'm going to do is um I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna indicate to everybody that did pass. All right. I'm not gonna tell you what is your mark. I'm just gonna say so you, you successfully pass because those students that obviously need to write supplementaries, I need to inform them as well. Or, or I already did it actually. 
um, for the students at SAP, I already informed them about that. But you know, for the verification, we might pick up one or two more. So, but that's that's highly unlikely. But that's why I'm just holding a little bit back on that. But I know there were there were two people that did not successfully complete, but it was the marks, and there's no way that there was. I already informed them as well that they have to write supplementary. So right. Um, so we're just going to verify, and then what I will do is I'm going to um, I, I will then next week, probably early next week, I'll just send everybody an email to just say now you successfully, and because I also need to communicate that to APSA head office, so I'm just going to then send to you an email just to say successful, and then once everybody have completed the then then I will once we've written the exam, the, the all that people, then we will print out an academic record for you with your marks, so you can see what's the actual marks. All right. And I'll send you an academic record. Great, thanks, Hank. No problem. Okay, everybody, are we happy? All right, so enjoy the rest of the evening, guys. So watch out for your next invitation. I think it's around the ninth or so where we do uh, the next uh, uh, class. Um, and in the meanwhile, guys, also remember, I just sent you an email regarding your study guide. Um, uh, NOMSA will start out sending out. Unfortunately, there's a there's a there's a there's a, a new there's a new there's a new version of the study guide uh, or a new textbook. They're starting this semester, but because we started last year, it's exactly the same work. The only reason why they are changing it because the the book that we you guys have used and we are very lucky, the book that you use for strategic management is coming from Pearson. And Pearson have decided in December overnight without informing anybody or nobody overnight Pearson have decided to leave the country immediately. So they have left, they have left a lot of universities totally in the dark. Um, I have got I've rewritten one of my study guides for organizational behavior using one of the books and I was just informed that that book might not be anymore be available in South Africa. And it's a total, total new study guide. The students must start this year. And they have just they have just closed their doors overnight. Nobody knows about it. They've just left the country. And luckily we have enough of, of the of the Pearson books. But um, uh, unfortunately, when they sent out a study guide, it was for the new one. So I've emailed that to you, the, the correct study guide, and we'll send you the hard copy as well. So uh, so that's no, there's no damage there. Uh, yes, I see there's a hand. Um, hi, Hank. Yes. So, so, so Pearson's is Edivos as well, right? No. Oh, okay. No, no, no. Edivos, is a, is a, is a, my understanding, Edivos is a, is a private institution of higher learning. Um, um, I'm not sure if Pearson, Pearson also, were, there was also Pearson Higher Education, which they mm. have, they was, they, 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 they did present qualifications. Uh, when I'm talking about Pearson that withdrawn, I'm talking about Pearson's pub. A publishing house. Oh, right. okay, okay. So if the if the Pearson Education have withdrawn, I'm not sure about that. I have not received information. So I'm talking about Pearson Publications. So all the people that were selling the books and bringing the books into the country and distributing books, they were all closed down. Mm. So literally, it's a situation that probably if we want to have now books, we will we will need to um, uh, import them from um, overseas. Um, so we're talking now about and that. You know, the reality of that happens then. Um, because Lola is that the moment we get where we have to get a book from overseas and we need to order from there, that takes books is easy in the region of a thousand to about 1,900 Rand for a textbook. That is the price for that kind of textbooks. And that's because of the, the transport cost because they don't print it locally anymore. Because normally if they hear they print locally, so obviously you can still buy it like five, six, seven, eight, eight hundred Rand. Mm. All right. And that's no, no, why. Okay. Cool. So, so my my question though was not about Pearson's. It just caught my attention. Yes. Um, I'm gonna take you back to what you just mentioned uh, about the exam. Yes. So I'm one of the people that could not write the exam. If yes. you've answered this already, please pardon me. Um, does that mean when I'm writing on the seventh, I'm writing a supplementary? Um. Uh. No. Uh, okay, cool. They, uh, no, I know that I know that there are some people that have communicated with me that they were some they they had some challenges. I'm so I've got it on record. So according to me, all the people that's writing now, they're writing for the first time. All right. Cool. Thank okay. you. Uh, except for the people that did not pass the online the online when they, when they, they failed the exam online, uh, for them it will be a supplementary. Happy. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. 
All right, ladies and gentlemen, enjoy the rest of the evening. It's almost weekend. I hope you have got something planned nicely for the weekend in between darkness and no water. Uh, but let us make the best of it. Uh, so if you don't have water, pour yourself wine and have a party over the weekend. Even put the candles on. It's very romantic. All right, guys, enjoy yourself. I'll speak to you very soon uh, again. All right. So uh, be good. And uh, I love you all. Cheers. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.